What's up guys, welcome back to this video. In today's video, as you can tell from the thumbnail, we're gonna be doing a DIY on the install for coilovers on a 240SX. As you can see right now, we are using my friend's 240 in the example for this video. I'll put his Instagram right up here below. This is a completely mint 240. And over here is exactly what we're gonna be putting on. We have a new set of gram lights. We have a set of brand new coilovers. We have a five piece wheel conversion, which we're also gonna be doing in this video lug nuts disc brakes everything you need uh we might as well take care of the brakes and the disc brakes the pads while we're in there while everything is off so we're going to be doing everything in one shot right now so the first step we're going to get right into this the first step is to jack up the car and get the wheels off and obviously our next step will be to take off the wheel caps and take off the nut Hey guys, quick disclaimer before we move on to the video. Looking back in hindsight, the toughest nuts to remove on this car are actually these four bolts. I'm gonna show you exactly how to remove them later in the video. But what I suggest you guys doing is taking apart the rear assembly just like this and constantly spraying WD-40 and hitting this hub with a hammer in order to loosen it up while you're working on the front. So while you guys are working on the front, I suggest every five minutes coming over here and spraying WD-40 on it, just so that when you get to the rear, your life is a lot easier because you're probably gonna have to be hitting this with a torch, at least for me. These bolts were extremely hard to get out. So as you can see, these have been soaking in WD-40 for the past hour as I've been doing the front. And hopefully you guys can do the same. It'll make your life a little bit easier. So guys, in this video, we're gonna be doing this side at one time. So for safety purposes, it's always nice to put a wooden block right behind this wheel back here. Just in case the handbrake gives out, you don't want anything falling or the jack sand tumbling over. All right guys, so once we have our wheel off and our mat set down, our next step is going to be to remove the brake. So the first step you're gonna to wanna to do is to get a 14 millimeter socket and take out the two bolts located right here and right here. So once these bolts are off, this actually slides right off, just like this. And you're gonna wanna get a bungee cord to hold this up so that nothing rips. You don't wanna put any stress on these brake lines back here. So instead of letting it hang, we're just gonna bungee cord. I'm gonna show you exactly how to set it up. You wanna get your bungee cord wrapped up just like this. You wanna hang it up here on the coilover just so that we don't damage any brake lines. And for our next step, we're going to want to come back here and take up these big bolts right over here. So guys, the next bolts, we're going to be taking off the clamp that holds the brakes in. And it's going to be these two bolts right here. I believe these are a ninth right here. I'm going to take up this one and this one. And these are 19 millimeter. See so how those bolts loose? This is all just going to slide off with the brake pads just like this. I'm going to put this to the side for now. And we're going to put this on. We're going to deal with this later when we put the new brakes on. Guys, the rear setup is basically exactly the same. You're going to take out these two bolts over here, which are the, I believe, 14 millimeter bolts. Another noteworthy change from the rear from the front is that the bolts that hold in the brace for the brakes are not a 19. They're actually at 18, which are right here and right here. And there are obviously some clearance issues on the top one, which is going to make it a little bit more difficult considering the upper control arm is directly in the way. But you should be able to use a hand wrench and get this off just like I am. So guys, the next step is to take off the rotors and there's actually no bolt to hold these in. We're just gonna slide them off just like that. Now, depending on your car, you may not have this cap on it. Some people on YouTube don't have it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to get it off. Essentially, you're just gonna have to go with a flathead screwdriver and a hammer. You're gonna knock your way all the way around this little cap right here. Just like that, it will pop off. Our next task is going to be to take off this clamp right here, this pin, as well as loosen that nut. So we're gonna do that right now. So once you get your pliers, you're gonna have to essentially bend these back until they're completely straight. This may be a little difficult, depending on how new your car is. So just like that, we're gonna make slight progress until these are straight and then we can take the pin out from the top. So it was a little bit rough. The trick is basically to get this as straight as possible. Let's see if we can focus. So the only thing that's going to make your life easier when trying to remove this pin is making this as straight as possible because the space as they come out is very tight. You can honestly hammer it out from the bottom. That's what I did. So once you got past this part and you have this pin out, we can find a socket and take this off, which is going to require a little bit of elbow grease. Now we're going to take the breaker bar. We're gonna break your bars a very, very long bar because unfortunately no gun can put as much torque as the human arm on a lever. I put this here, I already loosened it up. 
It's gonna require some force to get it off, don't be scared. Now we're gonna unscrew the axle nut, just like that. We have it taken off. Once the axle nut is off, all we have to do is pull this off. Just like that, our old hub is out. Don't forget to take out your old key piece just like this. This is essentially what helps it stay on the axle right here and not rotate freely. Now we're gonna move on to the rear because the rear requires a, a slightly different procedure. It's a little bit darker, but as you can see, the rear hub is not gonna be as easy as the front. We unfortunately have two bolts holding it on each side. We're gonna have to take a socket and we're gonna have to unbolt these nuts right here on the other side. So in order to get you some more access, you're gonna wanna loosen this bolt just like we did in the front. And this will allow you to move the drive shaft back and forth, which will give you the clearance in order to take it out. And now we're gonna show you how to unbolt it. On the 240s, there's a lot of stuff going on back here. It makes it really hard to get to more nuts. So you have two right here, two right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in the trunk and we're gonna loosen up the shock or the coilover from the top and we're gonna remove this. We're gonna change it anyway and this is gonna give us significantly more room just to mess around there and put our sockets in there because the drive shaft is gonna give you a lot of problems. So guys, the idea here is to get to these two bolts for the shock towers right there. We're gonna have to remove this interior piece right here. Um, these are 240s, so the way of mounting could be different in each one of the cars. You're gonna wanna get this piece off just so that this will be bare and you'll have an easier time getting a socket in there because that's honestly a really tight fit as it is. So once the top is unbolted, you can unbolt the bottom and the shock will come right out just like that. Now we're gonna have a lot more room to work on it and get the actual hub out. So these four back bolts are all in 19 millimeter. The setup I have right now is a half inch drive into an extension because it is extremely hard to get this in the right spot. And once you got them, you just gotta start breaking them apart. It's honestly gonna be the hardest part of the whole job, but spray some WD-40, get some weight on it, and be patient with it. So guys, hopefully you did not have a, as hard of a time as we did. These were torqued down to like 15 million pound feet of torque. We had to use a torch. If it's hard to get out for you too, just hit it with a torch WD-40 and have some patience with it, and eventually it will come off. Now that the bolts are out, you can hit it with a hammer. And just like that, we have our back hub off. Take the nut off, the axle out, and just like that, it has come off. This one's a little messed up, but there you go, just like that. All right, so now we're gonna have to unbolt the top of the bolts from the coilovers so we can get this off and put the new coilovers in. So now we're gonna pop the hood and I'm gonna show you what bolts to unbolt in the engine bay. So while we're here, we have these three bolts. This is essentially what holds the coilovers up to the top of the body. So we're gonna unbolt these three bolts right here, which are a 14 millimeter. Now our next step is going to be to remove these two bolts. These are the bolts that hold the bottom of the coilover to the knuckle. And once we have these unbolted, the entire coilover will come out. So unfortunately this part, you're gonna need a 17 millimeter wrench on the right and an 18 millimeter socket on the right. And this is exactly where you're gonna get it off. So now as you remove this, the whole coilover is gonna come loose. You're gonna wanna be careful when moving this bolt. Just like that. We're gonna watch out for the brakes. So just like that, we have the coils out. You're gonna have to watch out because there's actually a brake line clip that goes through right there. It kind of gave me some trouble. All you gotta do is take a uh, screwdriver and a hammer and it'll come right off. This is the front, by the way. We are ready to go and put our new coilovers in. This is the set of coilovers we're gonna be installing on this 240. Uh, depending on the product you buy, it's all essentially gonna be the same. What I like to do is have somebody to help you. You're gonna put the coilovers in here and bolt up the top bolts so that essentially it hangs and then you don't have to hold it up while you bolt up these two bottom bolts, which are gonna be a much bigger trouble. So once we have this in, we're gonna wanna put our nuts on top of here and we're gonna want these tightened down at the exact same socket as last time. So now we're gonna do exactly what we did in reverse. We're going to line up the new coilovers with the knuckle and we're gonna get the bolts through it just like we took them out. Get yeah. tight enough. So now we can finally put on our new wheel hub. This is our new wheel hub. This is the one with the five lug conversion on it. You're gonna wanna make sure you have the key like I mentioned from last time. We're just gonna seat it right inside of here. And just make sure that key sits flush. Now we can put our axle nut on right here. 
And now, don't forget, we're gonna need to put in our pin as well to make sure, because this is a good fail safe. You're gonna wanna hammer these out to make sure they're flat. Usually they're on a flat server just so this goes in easier. And then we have them somewhat flattened out. We're gonna try to get this through there. And once our pin is in, we're just gonna split the bottom ends. Now we have our new rotors. Be careful not to touch the actual braking surface with your fingers. If you do, just spray it with some degreaser because the last thing you want is to have grease on these things, which is really gonna ruin your braking experience. So most rotors actually come with a special coating on them in order to use for transportation to make sure they don't rust. So we're gonna hit it with uh, some brake cleaner right now. And once we have them on, we're gonna spray the front. So guys, for the rear, when compressing the rear brake caliper piston, you're gonna need a special tool just like this one. I'll link it down in the description. Uh, this and Ford, I believe, use the same same thing. It's a little bit different than most cars. We're gonna do it just like this, or else you won't be able to get the calipers or the pads far enough apart from each other to get onto the rotor. All right, everybody. So once you got everything taken apart, the install is going to be the exact same thing in reverse. It's not really any special things. Like I mentioned previously, you're gonna need a special tool for adjusting the rear brake pads. This is the tool right here. I'll put a link in the description if I can find one. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope now you guys have some insight. I hope I gave a nice detailed DIY on how to do wheel hubs plus core lowers on this car. Make sure everything is tightened up. If you have a breaker bar, just tighten everything down as much as you can. And thanks for watching. If you guys like this faster style DIY, please let me know in the comments. The last DIY did very, very good. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's going to really help us grow and I could put out more content like this. Shout out to Oscar SX. I'm going to put his tags right up on the screen for letting me work on his car and giving you guys some content. But yeah, if you guys are in the New York area and you work like this, please DM me. I'll happily feature your car on the channel and take some nice pictures of it. See you guys next time.